Hey, it's Ed, and we're going to talk about some manual D stuff, specifically when are we supposed to reduce our trunk. I hear lots of theories on it, but let's stick strictly to what manual D says. If you look at a duct and it, a duct system, and it looks like it only reduces once, either somebody was following the specific guidance in manual D, or that's just the way they did it. When you see multiple times the trunk reducing, that's something other than manual D. You can follow the rules as per manual D and reduce as many times as you want, but reducing as per manual D is, ex is exactly what's on your screen bullet pointed at 24 feet or when your velocity is dropped by 50%. Now, you can go years back with manual D and it was much more stern with that guidance. Uh, in the last printing, it, it's turned into eh, kind of around 24 feet and kind of around when your velocity drops to 50%, but it's not nearly as, um, uh, I don't know, strict, I guess is a good word to describe it. So let's go through the process. Again, I find people really struggle with this one. We had folks in class today that commented that they enjoyed the way I've updated some of my materials to make it so that it's easier to understand. It's not difficult, but in in my reality, I try and teach people manual, de, uh, manual D in a day. It's a lot of information to digest if you're not familiar with basic concepts like uh, you know, what friction rate is or what static pressure is and that. So if you're joining along with this, I'm under the assumption that you know that uh, friction rate is how we size ductwork and you also know that friction rate is a calculated value we're not just making stuff up making stuff up uh, when we lose predictability and the whole purpose of find uh, following an actual design process is because we crave that predictability here's a very basic duct system and specifically what i did with this duct system is i set it up so that it will be a duct system that has real round numbers, things that you might be familiar with. Real basic 1,000 CFM, 100 CFM per branch run. Again, I'm not trying to teach you math on this one. I'm not trying to teach you manual S or uh, manual uh, J. And a very uh, minuscule part of manual D is our, part, um, our, uh, our goal here. Our friction rate is 0.07. I have other videos that talk about how you calculate friction rate. Go take a peek at that if you're not familiar with how to calculate friction rate. And I'm going to say it again. You should be calculating friction rate. All right? Don't make it up. 0.1 isn't the right answer. 0 0.05, 0 0.08. They might be the right answer, but calculate it. So what size trunk duct do we need for 1,000 CFM at a 0 0.07 friction? Where there's a, a fine ductulator right there, and it is showing that if we line up 1,000 CFM under 0.07, right, the top line is our friction rate, we can come down here in this box and see that we need a piece of duct that is 24 by 8, 15 inch round. That also works out, but right over here, 24 by 8. What is the velocity of that 1,000 CFM moving through a piece of 24 by 8 duct? We go back to the duct slide and we follow that thousand down on the lower scale here. This is our velocity with reference to our airflow. And our thousand CFM is going to come out just a, a little bit above 800. Uh, if you want to call it uh, 850, I wouldn't argue with that. I think I'm going to call it 850. So you see where I have some additional information on my duct slide here that is not written directly on the duct slide i like to take a piece of scotch tape put it on the duct slide and write reminders to myself they're not really to me uh, I, I just put a mark but 700 right here is a reminder that that will be my velocity limit for a return trunk 900 is my velocity limit for a supply trunk and then i'll mark my friction rate up here again i'm going to do that per duct system after i've calculated calculated my friction rate have i said that we're supposed to calculate our friction rate enough times yet so our velocity was 850 is that okay and the answer to that is yes our maximum velocity in a supply trunk as per manual d is 900 feet per minute 
when are we supposed to reduce? Based off of the guidance of manual D, and we, we don't have, or we haven't reached 24 feet yet, but we have pulled some branch runs off. And the first test or uh, the first math we're going to do with respects to this is we pulled four branch runs off. That's leaving us 600 CFM of air inside a piece of 24 by 8 ductwork. And when we come up here and we look at our 600 CFM in a piece of 24 by eight ductwork, it tells me that my velocity is around 500 feet per minute. So is 500 feet per minute less than half of 850? And my math tells me that I need a number smaller than 500 feet per minute. In fact, I need a, a number around four and a quarter because four and a quarter is half of 850. That's how you do this, All right? So that's no good. And I think we have some verbiage up here that is uh, insinuating that it's no good in a bad way. Moving on, I'm gonna pull an additional branch run off. So I pulled five branch runs at 100 each. I started off with 1,000. I have 500 CFM remaining. And I'm gonna come down here and look at 500 CFM. And right here is 500 CFM. And it happens to land right on 420. How cool is that? Because I know that 420 is less than 425. So I'm approximately at half, give or take, a little less, than my initial 850 feet per minute that my 1,000 CFM would be moving at in a piece of 24 by 8 ductwork. So now I know that it's time to reduce after I take five branch runs off, right? That's bueno. I think so. I think you might too. So we got 24 by eight duct. We were at 850 feet per minute moving through it. Half of that was four and a quarter. We knew after five branch runs, it was time to reduce. So what size is the trunk that's gonna carry our remaining five branch runs? Pretty simple. We line the 500 CFM up under my 0.07 friction rate that we calculated. We didn't make it up. We calculated it using the friction rate worksheet. I am going to now come down here and look, and I got a piece of 12. Nope, I got a piece of 14 by 8. Uh, rounded up a uh, 12-inch round if you're going with round duct. But I got a piece of 14 by 8. That was pretty simple. So I got 14 by eight. How fast is it moving? It being that remaining 500 CFM. Grab the duck slide again. And I apologize here, I might be off by a skosh, but I don't care, it's close enough for me. I have my 500 CFM and it's lining up with about 700 or 700-ish. And a piece of 14 by eight ductwork. That's how you reduce your trunk. Uh, I don't want to hear about uh, any other made up methods. If you have something to share, let's share it, right? Show me some kind of, um, I don't know, a paragraph or something directly out of a book because everything I covered so far is directly out of manual D. What size are our branch runs? I'm not doing this, right? Go, go grab uh, another... Um, video or uh, stick your nose in the book and figure out uh, how to size those. We'll, we'll save that for another time. It's a little too more re remedial for today's life. And in real life, when I do this stuff, I sketch it up on a piece of paper and then I put it out for uh, you guys to view. And with that, I'm done. I hope you enjoyed what we just covered. I hope you learned something. And as always, if you have questions about this, uh, ask. If there's a specific topic you want me to cover, let me know, I'll be happy to do it. And with that, if I can get the thing on the right button, I'm going to hit stop. Take care.